Are you curious about using video to help promote your music and grow your fan base? That's what we're talking about today on the podcast, going through the basics of video. We'll see you on the inside. What is going on, guys? This is Mike from the Songwriters Planner, and you're here at the Songwriters Podcast. Songwriters Podcast I started this year to help you out there, artists, musicians, creative people, kind of get a foothold into being more productive and doing the things that we need to do now to promote our music. Uh, and, you know, there's just a bunch of a bunch of areas to talk about. And I hope that doing this podcast really helps you guys out there. And I love touching on these subjects. Um, you know, there's so many responsibilities we have these days as artists to promote ourselves, to put up websites, to network. Uh, and, and these things have nothing to do with writing music, really. And these are all on our shoulders now. And this songwriters podcast is basically here to talk about all of those things. Songwriting too, of course, obviously being in bands, being a musician, performing. And uh, I just feel like a lot of these other aspects of being an artist can get easily overlooked by us because we are creative people. So thanks for joining me on the podcast. And uh, like I said, I hope that these issues that we talk about really help you guys out there. Um, so today, this podcast, I wanted to talk about video. Now, why video? Well, obviously, if you use your smartphone, if you're on a computer, video is everywhere. And I think that video is still underrated, uh, underused by artists and performers. Um, and I think that the reason is because, you know, we look at ourselves as the artists, the creative side, the creative people, and we don't really see ourselves as marketers or promoters. And using video to get your music out is really kind of the marketing side. Now, unless you're a director, obviously you're, you're on the creative side, but using video to promote yourself is kind of like putting on your marketing hat. And I think that for us as creative people to step into the marketing side, it's a little bit of a challenge. And video is the main tool nowadays to to get to to channel your music out and to find new fans and to get your music out to your existing fans. And it is such an important aspect of being a musician today that I think we we underuse it. Um, For me, I started shooting video and creating videos for my music and my projects probably about four years ago. And uh, I've never looked back. I got my first HD camera. Uh, Cracked open my first copy of Adobe Premiere Pro, and I've never looked back. It has been uh, an amazing tool to have in my pocket to know that if I want to create a video, uh, you know, a a, a well, well filmed, well edited video, I have the skills to do that, and I'm really proud of that. And if if you can take time to do that, then what it does is it's giving you the tools to be able to put out videos anytime you want. so we're going to go into talk about video. We're going to talk about the different kinds of video that we have out there, the kind that you can use. There's live video. There's uh, short videos, the kind you see on, say, Instagram. They're about a minute or so long. And um, it just just tons of opportunities to use video to, to get your music out and have people find you. So that I just wanted to give you a little history about me and, and using video for me. Obviously, my podcast... I could have easily chosen to just do an audio podcast, but because I'm so passionate about video, I wanted to do a video as well to give you not just to hear my voice, but to see my face, to see my facial reactions and to see my hand movements because I do a lot of those. Um, but so that's that's why I think it's so important. And when people can see and hear you and not just your music, but your personality, the way you you talk, the way you look at the camera the way you look at your audience it's just that that dimension that you can't you can't get with any kind of other content or media at all um you know audio would be second obviously but video is just it's just the 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 king of 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 promotion and marketing these days so that's why i thought it was so important to talk about and and hopefully channel my my passion for video down to you so that you can 
perhaps use these same suggestions and tips and the things we talk about today in your music and, and inspire you to pick up your own camera and uh, get busy. So, all right. Um, so yeah, so that was a quick introduction. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the different kinds of video, as I mentioned earlier. Um, there's many different kinds. There is live video where our most social media platforms do support live video now, YouTube, Facebook, and live videos are great. Um, they're very raw, very off the cuff, very here am I, here I am now, right this minute, <laughs> check me out. And that can be kind of intimidating to go live uh, for live videos. I personally am a little, believe it or not, I'm a little hesitant to use live video at this time. I think that live video is going to get bigger and bigger and more popular as we go. But I found that if I really want to portray a message or this works for music as well, if I really want to get my music across or do something like a podcast and really, really get something out there that I pre-planned ahead, it's better for me to use pre-filmed video to get my message out like all my podcasts are. And for you, live video is great if you want to do a quick live performance of a song or something like that. That really works well. So you have live videos, you got uh, pre-edited filmed videos, obviously, um, short videos on Instagram. Instagram only allows a minute long videos. And uh, I really like it when I go through Instagram and see people playing songs on Instagram. Now, it's it kind of sucks that you can only get one minute of video, um, but it does give the viewer and the listener a little insight into what how, what kind of talent you have and how you how you sound. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of Instagram videos. Uh, it just bugs me that they're only one minute long, but it, it, it's natural for the platform. It's a pretty quick platform, so I get that. I understand. Um, and now we'll, and we'll move on to longer form videos, videos that you find on YouTube, uh, full episodes of, of content, of vlogs and movies and stuff like that. Um, that obviously creating those kinds of videos for your music is going to take a little more effort because you're you have to fill up you know you're going for say even 10 minutes is a long time but those work well for platforms like vlogging storytelling things like that all very useful to artists and musicians and if you can get to the point where you're comfortable creating those kinds of videos um, you can actually grow your audience even more not just because you're on the YouTube platform but because you can give you have more opportunity a little more time for fans to get to know you uh, you can have more longer interviews and do cut in clips of you performing practicing and things like that so YouTube I really love YouTube um, all my podcasts go on YouTube obviously uh, all my uh, musical project videos go on YouTube got my own channel and uh, I think I just love the longer form of video and I think that aside from doing music videos longer form videos really give an opportunity that you don't really get in anywhere else so that's kind of the breakdown of the different kinds of video that you can use out there and you can create for yourself now if you're just starting out obviously you're not going to be doing you know 10 minute 20 minute 30 minute long videos that's probably too much to chew up and will probably take too much time um, unless you're just you know you just let the camera roll and you just talk in front of it but that probably won't be as interesting to your audience as if you were to start editing your videos and create some really engaging content type videos, storytelling and things like that. Um, so I think if you're starting out doing short videos of your music, you playing in your room, um, you at band rehearsal, maybe filming a song or two, it doesn't have to be fancy, just maybe one camera. Um, just simple videos is the best way to start out if you want to get to use video if you want to start using video to reach more uh, get more audiences um, and then eventually move work up to creating longer vlogs and putting your videos on youtube and creating more storytelling elements to your videos um, so those are the different kinds of videos we have out there to create for ourselves as musicians and the what's important is that you find the one that is you're comfortable with and that you can start off with and that you can get done and still be productive and not get caught up in, oh man, I got to create this video. It's taking me too long. And then you lose momentum and you lose motivation. So finding that right sweet spot of where to start is really important. Um, 
So let's let's talk about let's see let's talk about the technical side of creating a video, um, the different ways you're going to capture your video. So let's talk about the obvious: your phone. What your phone? Yes, your phone is can be your personal video recorder, obviously. Um, and the majority, I think, the majority of what I call ad hoc videos are the ones where we just pull out the phone, we start filming, are on phones. Not many people carry around cameras with them very often, unless you're into videography. You're not really carrying around an HD camera or, or a GoPro or a DSLR camera. So our phones are the easiest things that we can use to create these videos. I'm a big fan of phone videos. Um, the only thing that I probably don't like about using our phones for videos is the audio. The audio just you never really get great audio from a phone. Phones are meant to be phones, you know, they're not meant to be recorders. Um, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't use your phone. I, I really am a big fan of phones and using phone videos. Uh, they, they work, they're quick. You can upload them straight to your social media platforms. And uh, yeah, they're, they're just the, the ultimate tool that everybody has with them. So that's the number one way that we're gonna be creating our videos, obviously. Um, and the next way is to have a camera with you. And cameras come in all shapes and sizes. They come in all kinds of prices. Uh, I use GoPros, I use HD cameras, I use a DSLR camera. I mean, the it's it runs the gamut, obviously. Um, and some of these cameras obviously fall into different price ranges. Um, if you're on a budget, and most of us are, I would really just kind of suggest starting off with an HD camera something that is in the you know 130 140 uh, range and just learn how to film just learn how to film with an HD camera with a regular camera and if you've already been doing video on your phone you're gonna find that it's pretty the skills that you have on your phone for video translate pretty well uh, to an, a regular camera but the thing that a regular camera gives you is you have zooming you have different settings you can mess with and um, it's not a digital zoom, it's an actual lens zoom, and there's a difference there. I think that with, with phone cameras, it's all digital zoom, and it can get pretty grainy and blotchy when you zoom in too close. Uh, with cameras, you're dealing with real lenses here, real high-quality lenses, or higher quality than your phone's going to have. And you can do zooming with lens zooming, and that's more traditional, and you get a lot way better uh, performance out of that. So regular HD cameras are great. Uh, you can also pick up lower line GoPros. I use GoPros all the time. This is a GoPro that's being filmed on right now. And I just love them because they're tiny and you can put them anywhere and they got clamps and you can clamp them to places and just make them look really cool. Uh, I'm a huge fan of GoPros and um, use them all the time. Uh, they don't record audio that great, I'd say. And uh, But then again, they're an action camera. They're not designed to pick up sound. So that just goes with it, right? Um, so yeah, GoPro cameras, great for shooting video on and uh, for getting really cool looking perspective wide shots. They have wide angle lenses on them, so that looks really cool. And uh, high quality cameras like DSLR cameras, the Canons, the Nikons, uh, you know, these are really high end cameras that you're gonna end up paying at least a couple hundred dollars for, or actually probably more than that. It goes from three, four, five hundred dollars all the way up to thousands of dollars, depending on how much you wanna spend. Um, excuse me they uh they are really good cameras because they have great lenses on them and they have great features and these are professional type cameras and you can put on microphones on them and you can just make them look a lot of people film their professionally filmed cameras on dslr cameras um i use them as well for a lot of the video stuff i use and i just love the quality you can't beat the quality of the dslr camera now i wouldn't suggest going out and go out and buy one and just start using it unless you have the money to do it because they are expensive and they're more of an investment kind of thing. So I wouldn't run out and try to go buy a DSLR camera. You can get complete great video and audio off of the HD camera and the GoPro camera. There's no doubt about that. So if you ever feel like you're ready to take your videos up a notch in quality, then start looking into the DSLRs and all the features that they have. Really good stuff. Okay. Um, Let's talk about getting external audio when you do your videos. Uh, here's a perfect example. My setup is a perfect example of what we're talking about today. I have a microphone here, condenser mic, and I have my camera. Now what I do is I'll record my audio. All of it gets recorded in this microphone, goes into my interface, and is being recorded right there, you can see. 
Um, and if you're on, on podcast, I basically have, I'm pointing to my computer screen where the wave or the audio is being recorded. Um, I always like to record my audio separate from my video. So you keep them separately because that allows you to get cleaner audio and you can edit the audio if you need to. If you need to push the gain up, make it louder or whatever. You can really do that when you have a separate uh, audio file. Now, obviously cameras record audio and some cameras have great audio, so you may not have to do that. I'm pretty sure I could get away with this podcast just with using the audio from the camera and uh, it would be fine. You'd be, you'd be able to hear it just fine. But because I'm in this studio and I'm here and I have this equipment, I wanna record it separately. Now, when you're doing your videos, if you do get a chance to record your audio and your video separately, say you sing your songs into a microphone and record that audio and you have a guitar and you record that guitar into your, uh, into your interface there, your digital audio workstation, and then when it's time to edit the video, you bring them both together and you sync them up. Um, that's the most ideal way. Uh, it's just you just get better quality audio when you do it that way. But but make no mistake, camera. Some cameras have really great microphones, and you're going to be really good with the. You most times you'll be good with just the camera re- microphone if you don't have the budget for uh, separate audio equipment. Okay, it all works. It really does. It really does. Um, and uh, okay, so covered that. I also want to talk about. When you're doing your videos, and I've talked about this before, try to make it so that you're you have a really cool, interesting setting behind you, uh, your setting behind you, or where you are. Make it interesting so that it looks cool on camera. That'll make help your videos um, be more appealing to people as they watch them, or in it, it'll make really cool thumbnails so that when they see your thumbnail of your video and they go, "Oh wow, that looks pretty cool," you know, uh, your setting really, really matters. Um, and it really says a lot about who you are. As you can see, this setting is this. This is pretty much me. I got dragons on the wall. I got a skull up here. I got a drink over here. I mean, this is pretty much a, how I am. And you want to make your setting how you feel that represents you because you're trying to sell your music, your brand, your personality, everything like that. So everything about your video has to shine through as who you are. Okay. And it doesn't have to be fancy. I mean, this room is not fancy. This isn't fancy right here. You know, it's just you and interesting. It's something that the viewer would go, wow, yeah, that looks pretty cool. Um, so setting is really, really important. Don't forget about that. And um, that'll just help you help your videos pop a little bit more when you're filming yourself and making a video of yourself, okay? Um, so now let's talk about video editing software and the ins and outs of video editing. Now. Editing itself is is a whole different podcast. I mean, there's just too many things to cover, and I'm I don't want to uh, make it sound overwhelming when I talk about editing. Um, I use editing for all my videos. Uh, I just love be having all that control over the storytelling part of my videos. If it's whether it's a music video or whether it's a vlog, I'm trying to reach audience, or whether I'm making a video ad for a show coming up. All these things that I can do. Through video, I do through editing video, and um, it's just really effective for me, and I want to share that with you so that you look into creating videos and editing them. Now, how do you edit them? Uh, Well, you use software, of course, obviously, and uh, there's a bunch of different software packages out there that you can use to edit video. Um, I use Adobe Premiere Pro. There's Final Cut. There's uh, a lot of cheaper options out there, and you don't have to be fancy with it. You don't have to spend thousands of dollars on editing, video editing software. I know it sounds intimidating, but it's really not. Um, I know that the editing video and creating videos has this stigma attached to it that it's oh, it's so hard and difficult, and only you know only the pros can do it, or only certain people know how to edit video. I'll tell you right now, it's baloney. You can learn how to edit video with just a little bit of time and having the right software or the software that you're comfortable with, and you can get to editing, it's really, really easy once you get the hang of it. It just takes a little bit of practice and you get on it. So I use, like I was saying, I use Adobe Premiere Pro, and um, I really love it because it's very intuitive for me. It's drag, move your videos into the bucket, pull them onto what they call a timeline, and a timeline is something where you can basically, your video is laid out. I'm sure you've seen it before on video editing software your, where your video is laid out on a timeline, and you can basically take the line that 
as it's all linear, right? As it's playing, it just scrolls across the screen. And you can grab that line and you can scrub back and forth, back and forth. And what that does is that plays your video back and forth. And it allows you to cut, cut, and edit out parts that you don't want. And then grab parts from maybe another video that you do want, place it in that timeline over your video file so that when it scrubs over, it'll play that, that section that you just added. Um, it's really hard to portray this over if you're listening on podcasts. I hope I hope I'm giving you good visual cues onto video editing. But basically the message I want to say is that it's not difficult to do. Editing videos is not difficult to do. So don't worry about being overwhelmed or intimidated with it. It's very simple. Um, and I really if 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 there's anything that you do leave from this podcast is that I want you to know that you can do it. You can edit videos and you can create them using packages like Premiere Pro, Final Cut, and all that stuff like that. So take some time to look into it. And uh, I will also say, if you have any questions about video editing, please ask me. Ask me. Send me an email. Hit me up on Messenger and just ask me any questions. And if I can answer it, I will. And if not, I will try to send you in the direction that you will get your answer, okay? Um, so and just want, that was just want to talk about editing really quick. And then uh, also, once you start getting the hang of filming your videos, uh, you performing, uh, in your room, in your studio, or at your gigs, um, it'd be it's really cool to start getting into multi-camera video. So now you're you're filming your your performances or your your vlogs with multiple cameras, and you have multiple angles at the same time. And that's nothing more than just having, say, two or three cameras running at the same time filming, and then later taking the footage off of them and then syncing them up, syncing them together so that they lock into each other. And then you literally can just pick and choose what camera angle you want at a specific time. Um, Multi-camera video video editing is also sounds intimidating. It sounds overwhelming, but it is. I'm here to tell you it is not. I do it all the time, and it didn't take that long to figure it out. So if you can do multi-camera editing, video editing, definitely get geeky about it, get nerdy about it, and try to find out if that's right for you. I wouldn't recommend starting off with it, but eventually if you get to the point where you can and you get the confidence, definitely look into multicam uh, recording. It's just going to make your videos pop a little bit more. Okay. And uh, we'll just get real technical really quick. We'll talk about file formats. Um, what kind of file formats should you cre create your videos in? Um, I do everything in, in the MP4 uh, file format. It's pretty standard. Um, it's a standard coding uh, uh, codec. And basically, YouTube loves it. Facebook loves it. Um, and it's just a, it's just well accepted and it's really good for internet playing and streaming. So the MP4 uh, file format is what I use for all my videos. And here's the thing I want to talk about really quick. Okay, video technology comes out so fast, so fast in a year that you know it's like you have HD, and then you go to like you got 4K, and next thing you know, you you the quality of video is just going up so quickly. However, don't get sold into the fact that you have to have the latest and greatest um, resolutions. Okay, you do not need that. Why? Because the internet, the speed of the internet, the streaming speed hasn't caught up with the fast, uh, the 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 detail of these higher resolutions of video. Okay. Um, you're not going to see the difference between a 4K and a 1080. Uh, those are resolution sizes, and the 4K is really, really detailed. You're not really going to see that detail if you're just streaming a video over your phone. Matter of fact, the higher the resolution, the higher the file size is. And if you're streaming your videos on YouTube and whatnot, you want you want your file sizes to be a little bit lower, so that <coughs> excuse me, so that they don't take as long to upload, and the quality is is better over a faster internet connection. Wait for that, the internet, wait for 5G speeds to come out on the internet before you start investing in really good cameras with high resolution files. Okay, we're talking about video files that you can create all the time, every day, and they don't, they don't stop you from getting your work done. They don't get in your way. They don't take forever to compile, and they don't take forever to upload, okay? Um, just wait for, wait for the internet speed to speed up. Probably will in umpteen years, and then start using those higher resolution uh, settings on your camera, okay? So, um, yeah, so that the last thing I want to leave with on this podcast is with the videos, with your videos, okay, the important thing to remember is it's not the video itself. It's not one video. It's not two videos. It's not three videos. It's consistent video over time that's going to get you your biggest audience over time. 
doing videos consistently, creating one video a week or doing multiple live videos every week, being consistent with it is the secret to growing your audience. It's not one amazing video. It's not two amazing videos unless you're doing something completely viral. Okay. Like, okay, go their videos are crazy. Uh, but that is next level stuff. I'm talking about you talking about me, uh, our level. It's not one, two, two videos. It's going to be you putting out your own videos consistently over a period of time. And it could be years before, you know, that period of time could be years for you, but you know, you're in this for the long haul, right? So it's doing consistent video, doing consistent. So people get used to you doing it and then you get used to you seeing, seeing you doing videos. And next thing you know, like the next time you see them or they see you, they're like, oh man, I love that video. Like you're at the top of their head because they, all they do is when they see you, you're in a video. Um, when they see you on your phone, you're in a video, you're doing a song, you're talking about your music, you're doing this, you're doing that. Um, if you're consistent with using video, no matter what, if it's live video, uh, short videos or long form videos, just keep doing video. Just keep being consistent with it. That's the secret for people to find out about you because getting your name and your music out there takes time. And if you're playing your shows consistently, you're doing shows and you're putting out videos, you're now basically, you're, you're, you're pushing yourself out there in multiple formats. You're doing it in the real world with your shows and then you're doing it on online where everybody is at. And in order to do that, to keep do that, you got to keep consistently putting out videos. Um, I'm happy to say that I've definitely put out at least one edited, produced video a week for the past three years. Every, I mean, if you're a Facebook friend with me, um, you're going to see a new video from me every week. And it's going to be an edited music video for the most part. And you're going to see a throwback video and you're going to see vlogs. You're going to see all this stuff because I truly believe that video is the 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 counterpoint for artists and musicians but i also truly believe on top of that that consistent video is even more powerful than video itself and uh, especially in a world where we live in attention spans that are about the size of mice if you're not consistently putting out videos then you're not going to be top of mind uh, i like to use that term you're not going to be at the top of mind of people if you're not consistently in their in their face and that's just the way it is because there's so much competition out there and video is the best weapon for that consistent video so remember that to get to the top of mind of people you want to do consistent video um so i'm going to wrap up this podcast here right now um again like with all these podcasts i could talk forever but i'm not going to do that so if you made it this far thank you <laughs> uh, i'll probably do another video segment uh, again because there's just so many things to cover and and like i said i just am passionate about using video to get your art out there and your music. So definitely we'll be doing another video podcast sometime in the future. But uh, until then, you guys, thanks for joining me on the podcast. And if you're new here, I appreciate you uh, checking it out. And um, yeah, just swing by. And if you have any questions or comments or anything about any of my podcasts, please feel free to hit me up uh, on my website. You can hit me up on Facebook. I'm on Facebook all the time, every day, probably more than I should be. And uh, just hit me up, message me. I'm here. I'm, 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 if you message me, you're going to get me. So, all right, guys. Thanks for joining me. Till the next time, I'll see you in the next podcast. Peace and love.